Hello there and welcome to this series of conversations with Equality Now, Better for Kenya and Capital FM, titled Your Voice Matters. I'm Janet Mbogwa and these are such important conversations, especially this year, 26 years since the Beijing Women's Conference, that was really just a game changer. Women's issues were put at the heart of everything, especially in leadership, in addressing issues like gender-based violence, which is why we're here today. So trying to take stock of where are we now, 26 years later, has there been progress? Has it been slow? What more needs to be done? And so today I have an incredible panel um, who will use their voices. These are influencers. And the reason why the influence of voice is so important is because of the community that follows them, their followers. And a lot of what they say is able to translate to this larger community and hopefully amplify this message uh, to many more people. So. I want to welcome Shiko Wasoksi, Shix Kapienga. <laughs> Thank you. And so I really much. want them to tell us a little bit more about who they are. You you know them, you've seen them, you follow them. <laughs> I know. It's funny how guys are like, no, just introduce yes. me. Yes. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Shiko. Tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do and why you're passionate about these conversations. Okay, so first, I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, uh, I'm the founder of PCS Foundation of Kenya. So that's a whole different story. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a marketer. Yeah. Um, I love talking about everything women's health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's all about That's that. good. That's, yeah. a, that's a good way to yeah. sum it up. Yeah. Shiks. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Shiks Kapienga, uh, radio presenter, TV presenter, um, actress, uh, thespian. Basically, yeah, and mm -hmm. I love everything to do with empowering the girl child and just, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm an auntie too. Okay, I'm with Japata, but I'm an auntie too. <laughs> so, auntie shits. Auntie shits. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Shiko, auntie shits, Mama Janet, we're all mm. here. Well, thank you. I, I admire you two a lot. Thank you so you much. You know, I think these conversations um, are more fruitful with voices like yours because you do talk about a different issues. So before we get into the questions around gender-based violence, I want to give a definition and I'll make reference here. Gender-based violence is defined as any act that results in physical, sexual or psychological harm or suffering, including threats of such acts, coercion or arbitrary deprivations of liberty, whether occurring in public or private life perpetrated against a person based on socially ascribed uh, gender differences between males and females. I know it's a mouthful, but it's important that we kind of holistically look at gender-based violence. So that's the definition mm -hmm. that's known. When you hear gender-based violence, um, GBV, SGBV, and I know we've heard it so much more, especially with the pandemic, um, starting with you, Shiko, what comes to mind? What, what comes to mind when you hear gender-based violence? I think the first thing that comes to mind is um, wife battering, because mm. uh, I think that's the, it's the first thing. Then rape. Um, then sexual harassment, mm -hmm. yeah, basically those three. Yeah, those yeah. are that's that, that's, that's what what's... comes top of mind. Yeah, what yeah. about for you, Shiks? Yeah, same here actually, because it's more of just physical abuse, um, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to women. So mm -hmm. it's that, and mm -hmm. then there's as she said, as she was said, sexual violence, and now, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's just too much. And as like you've put it, right now the COVID thing going on, it's mm -hmm. it has become more. Mm. Like, mm. It's too much. It's, it's, it's amplified too much. more. Yeah. Mm. You know what's, what's, what's really unfortunate is, as women, a lot of women will say, um, for instance, sexual harassment. You'll find it's a story that almost every woman you speak to, whether it was in the workplace, whether it mm. was when they were in school, whether it was in their home, in any community yeah. that they're in, there's a sense that uh, you know, they faced it. Mm. They faced harassment. Um, whether it's being catcalled, whether it's being attacked. Yeah. Um, and so seeing that this conversation has come up again, I believe more women are now aware about these things happening to them. Do you have particular incidents that stand out for both of you of when gender-based violence, you really saw it stand out? Mm -hmm. A story that you heard, saw, knew about, that has never quite left you mm -hmm. about just how gripping um, and dehumanizing gender-based violence can be. Okay. Yeah. So for me, it's a friend who called me on a Sunday morning and told me this guy will kill me. 
and we were like okay what has happened they were from out they were high both of them and they'd gone back home but they had a disagreement that led to fighting but it's something that had been happening mm. so even the neighbors were like ah sini kawaida wanapigananga but this time around she sounded very like this thing uh, just come mm. so we went me and my husband we went and we found there was so much blood on the floor i i never thought in my life i've never experienced any battering of any so i've never seen i've never mm. and i saw it now in adulthood the house was full of blood the kids were in a corner crying mm. the house help is in the kitchen not knowing what to do as much as they do it all the time this looked like it was now mm. too much the lady was in the bedroom and the guy had left so i think that's when it hit me my god mm. when i hear wife battering or mm. you know gender based violence i think it's a slap and then mumekosana and you've walked out but this looked like the next day or the next minute this woman would have even lost mm. her life yeah do you know what happened next how did yeah. that they patched things up family came they patched things they're still together they're still mm. together and i think they are working through it but what hurt me the most i think is hearing when they report to the police the police tells them that this is a ini mambo ya nyumbani you guys sort it out ongeni mm. and i thought No that's the person who should be protecting them not mm. telling them ni mambo ya nyumbani the house help on the other hand was like hawa tu na ngoja anga kuona cuz they, they would fight each other na ngoja anga tu kuona nani ataua mwingine so it's mm. yeah and the fact that it's normalized to the point where yes. this happens wow Oof. that's shocking what about it you is. um mine was uh, my sister's friend uh may she rest in peace she mm. passed mm. um and it's these situations where Well before I get to that when I was young I think I was in I was 8 years 9 years we used to have a neighbor um in Kangemi who you would hear every night come coming home from uh to say me 100 meters or 200 meters away uh, screaming and shouting Simba mm. you know like eh. mm. and that's it's midnight it's past midnight Simba na kifika kwa nyumba screaming ni wife anachapwa the wife used to be beaten and you could hear neighbors and then fika the point where it was just normal mm. like they used to fight every day and guys just normalized it like it was just mm. and then now it uh around when I was i think 2020 or even 18 19 um, my sister's friend met a friend met a guy friend and they started you know how you just it's like you're getting to know each other and This guy invites her over uh to his place not to, not to his place per se mm. but to like a motel or something. Mm. And um that night my sister's phone was off. So this chick had been trying to call my sister uh but her phone was off and what happened is this guy pushed her off the balcony mm. and she passed. Mm. And this is because she did not give in to his demands. Wow. So you can imagine um the shock that my sister got that was now on Sunday after we from church and um uh, friends were calling family were, were were calling my sister and my sister was like what's going on everyone is calling me mm. what's going on excuse me sorry mm. so my sister was like you know, and then she was told that the friend passed and she saw the missed calls and she tried calling the phone but So she probably through. tried when they were in the middle of a fight. Yes. And then she passed. Yes, she passed. And this is years ago and we yeah. literally had a story not too long ago of somebody being being pushed away. And I think mm. that's why we're here having these conversations mm. is yeah. how is it that things change but they're still the same. Mm. Yeah. Right? And so what do you think um mm. what do you think needs to change? And I know that question may sound obvious, but you've just mm. raised something important. You've said The police, the police at that time yeah. normalized it isn't yeah. if it was on yeah. you've talked about the fact that um obviously maybe she was just trying to to reach out to reach for out, help yeah. you don't have a, a a safe house you can go to you don't mm-hmm. have somewhere that you can go to for help exactly so when you think you know as women we're here we're trying to address gbv in a perfect world what would need to change for there to be less incidents i think first the Let me just call it the government because it's the government, the police and the mm-hmm. judiciary, all those things. The laws should be put in such a way that they put, they protect the victim and nini the perpetrator. Mm. The police should not send us away yoni mambo ya nyumbani. They should at least listen what is going on. Mm. And if I've been going there twice or thrice telling you this is happening, 
the next thing maybe it's a corpse that will be brought to you because mm. this person has killed the other so i think there should be a way the police or judiciary or the law should be made in such a way that it protects the victim mm -hmm. and just listens out the story mm -hmm. as much as nimambo ya nyumbani honestly listen out the story and mm. protect either of the parties yeah, yeah from each other yeah, yeah. no that makes sense and not just yeah. immediately form an opinion yeah, and say yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah we need to stop just word for that we need to stop normalizing mm. uh, gpv because um, if you look at guys from the urban, poor urban areas, mm. these things happen. Mm. But you see, because they do not have a voice, they do not know who to talk to, mm. and they do not know how to say it. Because mm. if I come to you and talk and tell you as my neighbor, you know, it's a shame. Itachukuluwa ni 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 aibu kwangu kwenda kukuambia mambo zangu za nyumbani what was happening. Mm -hmm. So guys will brush it off. Ama guys will be like, ah, mtasikizana tu. Mm -hmm. Ama itakuwa, ayo ni kawaida. Ah, ni wewe hau kufanya. Mm -hmm. Yet, maybe ni kitu, the guy has his frustrations, the chick has mm -hmm. her frustrations. Mm -hmm. You end up fighting, you end up getting hurt. We end up burying someone. Yeah. But it's because tumefika mahali guys are just normalizing gbv yeah. it's mm -hmm. just we it's need okay. to stop normalizing it yeah until guys are able to talk about it speak up mm -hmm. and don't just speak up to be heard speak up and action to be taken mm -hmm. you know it, it's yeah. we have a long way to go and it has to start with us it has it to start with us mm -hmm. you know the two of you also in 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 some of the work you do um the, the following you have i know you mentioned just now shiko mm -hmm. when when you do work around um pcos for example, one of the things that you've heard about is a woman who was who can be physically abused yeah. because she's unable to yeah. conceive. Yeah. Um, Shiks, you know, you've done radio, you've done acting, so you've interacted with a lot of different experiences. Yeah. How do you deal when somebody, like in the case that you're saying, this woman says, this is my experience? Mm. Because women do open up to you guys yes. quite a bit. Mm. I think you're, you're among the influencers who you find people are opening up to, um, what do you do with that? How do you how do you feel we can take that to the next step? I know you've talked about the government needs to intervene, mm. people need to listen, but somebody slides into your DM and says, this is my reality. Mm. Um, what do you normally say to them? How, how do you react and what do you say to them? Okay, so first for the foundation, I try to get help for them, like uh, mental mm -hmm. help, like talk to a counselor or something so that you can sort it out. But also I think it's come to a point where we don't keep quiet with our stories. The biggest challenge I have with women, especially suffering from PCOS, is not speaking out and saying, in this condition, I cannot have a child. It's not me who's made myself not to have a child, but I cannot have a child. So don't discriminate me because of that fact. I feel people should just speak up, mm -hmm. just say your truth. Whatever your truth is, that is yours. Just say it. Mm. Just speak it out. Yeah, yeah. And, and seek help if it gets to the to, point to where... The, yeah, to the extreme yeah. points. Uh, before, I didn't know what to do. Like, mm. guys will come to me and say, Shits, manzemi na pitia hi. Charlie yangu, because now of my age. Charlie yangu, manzeli ni piga. And you're like, mm. what do I say? Mm. You know, you're left to wonder, ni fanye? I cannot come in between you two, but at the same time, I need to help you, mm. you know. So I'd ask her, is there someone you can talk to? Mm. Is there someone you can approach? And then she'd be like, yeah, but sana gopa kwenda kuambia mama yangu, no gopa kuambia sister yangu. Because now also, look at it this way. If she open, opens up to the family, to the sister, or to the best friend, or to the mother, what happens is, Ni tukunje, mm. tuende uko, Tuchape. tuendeleze, GBV uko. You know, as in, mm. so inende kiongezeka. So nowadays what I try to do is, I talk to someone, I try and ask them, is it, do you really need to be there? And I know it's hurtful, it's nikitu, sisi, especially like chicks or women, it's hard living. It's because, you know, you've, you've, you've mm. in, uh, invested so much time, so much emotion, so much mm. in this relationship. And this person hits you for the first time and you do not know what to do. And then he hits you the second time. And then you think, apana, now, apana, I need to mm. talk. And then when you talk, unambiwa, ah, ni kawaida, just mm. go and... And then the third time, unapigwa, now you're bleeding, you've dislocated your jaw, I mean, mm. your arm, your, your leg. Your... Mm. In Afkamahali, what I tell them is also... As much as Nataka kukusaidia and I'll get help for you, I'll get someone to talk to you, to guide you. Um, what do you want? Mm. 
unataka nini we mwenyewe because look at your life ndio hii ni maisha yako na watoto wako maybe mm-hmm. unataka kufanya nini do you wanna stay there to the point that now tukikuja tunakuja kukutoa kama mm-hmm. ni maiti or do you want to live and mtajua vile mtaongea mm-hmm. mkiwa kando because it, it all comes to me it all comes back to you mm-hmm. what do you want what can you stand Uh, mm. what can you start utaishikila mpaka saa ngapi you know what's mm. powerful about what you've said mm. is um, the voice of the victim or survivor yeah um, you've talked about it when you you shared about the lady when you who called you and said i'm going to die mm. you've just talked about it about saying there's a there's a way that sometimes your voice is not validated and i think that's the most painful mm. thing yeah. it's these things happen you know ini kawaida mm. You've just said what do you want? Very few people I think tend to ask the survivor that. And I think our community because we are from a society that's very cultural and communal, yeah. a lot of it is we will decide for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's changing now. You know, yeah. I think there's more exposure. We're having conversations like this. Yeah. Um but at the same time you find there's still the thing of I have to be accountable. But I was also sharing with um the Equality Nine Better for Kenya team earlier that I was in Madare not too long ago. And it's not to make a very broad um statement about things have changed. Yeah. But what I loved hearing was everyone I was speaking to was saying vitu zinaanza ku change. Mm, There's something nice. different happening. There's accountability. Mm. And these are men, women, you know, college people in college, you know, young girls, boys, parents, border riders, motor yeah. drivers, mm. and they were all saying the same thing. They were saying there's still a long way to go, but right now If a woman says this is happening to me, they say they listen before they would say wejipanga. Wejipanga exactly. Wejipanga but nights nice. yeah exactly but now they're saying it's so hard for somebody to get away mm. with it. So mm. I think the more we talk, the more the way you're saying mm. share your story, share mm. your truth. The way you're seeing the way you're saying what's your story? What do you want? Mm. Yeah. They say it actually makes a difference of what do you want? Mm. Yeah. And somebody will say I want to leave which in itself is also very complex because mm. there's mm. the safe houses is an issue mm. um trying to figure out the gender desk at police stations yeah. the policies so something is happening um but a lot more needs to change you're a, you're a mom you have a daughter yeah. right oh my god you, you think about this don't yeah. you yeah and she's now turning seven. Yeah. and i've been looking at her just turning into like a small woman in my eyes and i'm like oh my god oh my god yeah. it's wild yeah. what do you want to see what what do you want her reality to be If she was going to sit here the way you are years from now, mm-hmm. what kind of world would you want to see her living in and how would you want to see her being safe and protected? Of course now I don't want her to be talking about this. Yeah. I want it to be a different conversation, a better conversation. I want her to be in an equal a, a place where she plays equally with everyone. She's not being put aside because wewe ni mm. ni mstana or anything. And also a safe environment where she can wear whatever she wants to wear and no one will judge her or take advantage of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And try, you're trying to figure out how to have that conversation. Yeah. And then I've also <laughs> I've also seen yeah. it's like we are wired as women. We we I think as we are growing up, we get this um like protective mechanism. Because like now I know before I leave I need to wear something that covers you know what? I need mm. so mm. every time I see I'm like no 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 go back get a long sweater or mm. so it's it's ingrained in women this mm. is our protective mechanism when i'm mm. leaving the house i need to check this and that yeah look so, at that and she's five and yeah, maybe and a, yeah well i don't really i have two i have two sons and it's it's funny because my thing is how can i make sure they don't mm. you know the statement of when did i go from being cute to being dangerous mm. so that that's also they're not also perceived as perpetrators how do you raise mm. them to also play equal mm. to not be yeah. intimidated to mm. understand consent and somebody once said something really powerful to me they said when your child is refusing to hug a grown up you know they are told nenda uhaga auntie mm. yeah. and they resist so, understand that that's consent yeah, yeah it is <laughs> it is you should have seen me trying to it be is. like hapana as we no, used it's to okay, it's okay hug. just go yeah. hug and, uh, and you know you it doesn't feel of, like hugging today it doesn't so feel like hard. hugging and so my friend said you know you need to understand that mm. consent and the auntie or uncle who's trying to force needs to respect that consent yeah. and that's how you begin to address things around consent gbv mm. etc mm. so yeah. we have work to yeah. do without you yeah <laughs> so another <laughs> thing what i've seen now with my son boys just tend generally tend to beat and mm. they are rough so every time he hits uh, the sister i'll be quick to tell him mm. don't hit your sister don't hit anyone it's not even just about it's a girl or a boy yeah. just don't be hitting people like mm. that and with time now i can see 
he will be slower to heat than yeah but i feel like that's where it starts though yeah, right true. It is. if and you let it grow if you let it grow i think um but the my kids were playing football and there's this girl who came and she said she feels bullied by the boys because the girls and the boys play mm-hmm. actually her mom came and said yeah she feels bullied um and then i asked her how do you feel she's like i'm pushed i'm shoved by the boys because they're rough i went to the coach yeah uh, he really did call me dramatic but i went and said don't you think this is to be addressed what did you yeah. say they're boys being boys i was like you see that's problematic mm. because <laughs> she it's affecting her yeah if they're pushing her and shoving her that's violence mm. we're normalizing it mm. yeah and it escalated it really did but at the end i think <laughs> the other coach understood it but no i'm think we're saying that it's about addressing it really mm. early on yeah. you know yeah. and, and normalizing it yeah mm. um I think what kind of have you ever done any work you're you're an actor as well yeah, yeah, yeah. um what's it like can I bring in Nairobi half life no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay it was okay. heavy very it was heavy but I think some of these themes came out right yeah, at yeah. that time as an actress as shakes mm. what stood out for you trying to get into character for such a very intense role about a movie that's about life in Nairobi crime mm. poverty mm. the hustle yeah. Um was it difficult to to portray the character? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> That's really? why I first saw you by the way. I first saw yeah? you in Behalf like Oh yeah. wow, that was like 2009. Even uh, it was one of all my set how many years. Yeah, so much that's a while, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Mm. Um yeah, it's never Behalf life was just an experience on its own because um getting to be into that character and knowing that you're actually doing something because you know someone is going through that mm. and trying to portray that character and mm. for the message to be heard mm. it was quite something um cuz these are girls who are going to who have a dream but because they cannot afford it they venture mm. into being um mm. uh, ladies of the night mm. for lack of a better term and it was just it mm. was hard and you're involved with thugs mm. you know because you want to make your money at the end of the day mm. so whoever who comes to your room whoever you see whoever you interact with who join your kinanani how to interact mm. now so there's so much going on interacting with thugs mm. interacting with um policemen you interacting with let, let's say the government mm. you inter- so many people mm. and how does that come to be ukikosa kufanya chenye na kuambia what happens mm. Mm. sinakulipa mm. sinakulipa kufanya hivi mm. mbona ufanye so mm. it's it's really mm. geez, it's it's hard and that's <laughs> the reality of so many is yes. the assault that follows because you did not agree, agree. exactly yeah. exactly um i think we'll take a short break okay. um and and come back and maybe just try and understand a little bit more about what ways can we actually begin to intentionally address gender based violence in communities and communities here means our families mm. um our neighborhoods where we are because unfortunately it is completely everywhere mm. yeah um and yet yes we are seeing the little changes conversations like this conversations like the one I was saying I had in Madare it is changing mm. but how do we get it to be the whole country rallies mm. behind yeah. the fact that it needs to change yeah. um because sometimes i think that's where the disconnect is mm. is that you have It's part of the population saying you asked for it mm. you know and the other half trying to push and say it's it's about addressing gender based violence and especially like i mentioned earlier on you know 26 years after the beijing women's conference leading into generation equality forum which is taking place uh, at the end of june and the whole idea and i think what's really incredible about this forum is it's almost a moment to pass the baton so to speak um to the next generation because i think as as chick said or maybe shiko is that we we need to begin to address it now so that years to come our children are not having this conversation mm-hmm. they're talking about how they were able to address gender based violence um commemorate 26 years and at that commemoration begin to put into action some of the ways in which they it, they could address gender based violence so that forum it's it's a global moment it's a global convening um and i think it's also a chance for governments to make pledges and hold themselves accountable for what they are not doing in terms of implementing the right policies to protect their citizens so we'll come back and learn a little bit more about that um on this conversation of your voice matters on gender based violence in communities
Welcome back. This is Your Voice Matters, a series of conversations with Equality Now, Capital FM, and Better for Kenya, highlighting gender equality issues, especially 26 years after the Beijing Women's Conference, which was a huge moment in putting women's issues at the center. But it's been 26 years, and the Generation Equality Forum is meant to be a moment to take stock of what's been achieved, where the gaps are, where the progress has been. And as mentioned before, there has been progress, but it has been slow. This episode is about gender-based violence in communities, whether that's our homes, our schools, our neighborhoods, something that is so rife and has become all too familiar, even in the headlines that you see all the time. And so we still have on set Shiko Asoksi, Shiks Kapyanga, and now we're joined by Judy Gitao of Equality Now. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Janet. Good to see you again. Um, to recap part of what we discussed earlier, Shiko and Shiks were sharing their experiences in terms of um, moments that stood out for them, incidents that they can never forget where the lives of women were put in danger because of gender-based violence. We talked about what we hope to see for our children, how we can begin to really change the conversation. Even now, with children as young as seven and five, it's just, it's never too early. And now we're equipped with the information and the tools, so why not begin using those? But what about what happens next? Um, so Judy can come in to first talk to us about, um, as broad as this may sound, the state of gender-based violence in Kenya. Um, like I said, people are so alive to the issues now. People are talking more about it. Um, it's been addressed a lot more. But from your point of view, what does gender-based violence in our communities look like right now? Um, it looks bad. Mm. Gender-based violence, um, just as a term prescribes, talks about all manner of violence meted out on someone on account of their gender. Um, and for purposes of our conversation, let's say gender is being either male or female. And women or girls are disproportionately affected by, by this violence. And it, it varies. It's from sexual harassment to someone going like on the street, mm -hmm. uh, down to someone upskirting you, down to someone raping you, down to someone pushing you, sexual harassment. It is bad. Mm. Um, and especially now, for example, in the context of COVID, we're seeing all sorts of violations mm. happening against women um, being justified as either um, people are frustrated and therefore they turn it out on women. Um, women are at home now because they're no longer going to work or are no longer engaging in, in employment or are no longer in school and therefore they're being violated. And so it is bad. Um, in terms of numbers alone, for example, um, in 20, uh, 2020, just when, when, when COVID was starting, the bulk of the cases that were being brought to court were GBV cases. Mm -hmm. um, in areas that we work across the country, not just in Nairobi, um, the bulk of the violations happening are GBV violations. And so, yes, we're talking a lot more. Women are talking a lot more. People are speaking up. Um, we're on social media tweeting about it, but it doesn't mean it's not happening. It mm. is happening. Yeah. And thanks for mentioning that. And then I think Shiko and Shiks had mentioned there's always this conversation that's um, it's Nikawaida, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time you find a woman is calling for help. She's either trying to ask her friends or her community and the community then turns around and says, but this is what happens, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. How can we really begin to shift that? I know that it's this cultural context to it. There's, um, it's almost socially um, normalized as well. But how do we begin to unlearn that? What's the first thing we need to do to unlearn? Because it's men and women who say mm. Nikawaida. Yeah. It's not just the men who are saying it. Um, it's the police. I think there's a case that mm. Shiko talked about where the police mm. said, oh, this is, this is just things for the home. So how do we begin to unlearn that? I think it's by saying no to the smallest of violations mm. all the way. I mean, let's not wait um, it, for, for it to be rape. For people to speak about it. I mean, by the time someone is, is whistling at you, cat calling you down the street, we need to call that out. Mm -hmm. um, and then we need to begin young. We need to begin kids being kids. We talk about, you know, we always talk about let's prosecute, let's investigate, let's call it out, but let's prevent it. Um, kids in school should already begin having these conversations. You need to start talking to boys and girls and letting them know that Everybody is a human being. Mm -hmm. um, where do you get off doing certain things? Um, sorry to always bring back this conversation, yeah. but um, quite recently there was that whole debacle in the media when when discussions went around about this this girl who was thrown off a balcony, and people were discussing, you know, as though you know commoditizing it. Let's 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 switch the foot, right? If if someone holds your sixteen year old son and throws him off. The 12th floor 
that's straight up murder or attempted murder. Nobody's having a discussion of yeah. why your son was on that floor. Mm. Nobody's discussing whether your son was in shorts or not, mm. or your brother was in shorts or not. So we need to completely almost remove the gender card and let everybody from a very early age, from the time they're in school, from the time they're having conversations with their parents, from the time you're having your first conversation with your primary school or your nursery school teacher, to begin to, to understand respecting of the human being, knowing that where my rights and yours begin, and so I'm not about violating you because you are a lesser human being. And we need to begin to have those uncomfortable discussions, yeah. really. Mm. That's powerful, painting oh. it the picture of if, if it was the other way around, mm. which maybe I can bring this in with the two of you. Um, DJ Soxy, who everybody knows, your <laughs> husband. <laughs> how do you have these conversations in the home? You just talked about how you tell your son mm. when he's being rough, don't do that. Mm. Um, so how do you then as a couple navigate it? What are your thoughts on how he sees it? How does he see the issue of gender-based violence and how it can be addressed? Okay, I, I think we are on the same page with him. <laughs> when I talk to him, Nasianga tuko pamoja. And I can see him also now trying to tell, because you see, for a man, he's a greater voice to the girl, as mm. in the dad, he's a greater mm. voice to the to the daughter. So I can see him how he talks to Wairimo and tells her things, this should not happen if someone, ta even like now, for example, it's, it's already known that daddy should not see her mm. without clothes and should not touch her. Just so that we are clear that is a, a, a girlish uh, mm. thing. So I can see how he also talks to her and also how he talks to mm. uh, Ethan about don't beat your sister, don't, don't. Mm. And even now on general cases, like the, the story where we went to see to see the lady who had been beaten up and the conversation we had later is he has seen it himself uh, when he was growing up. So he wouldn't want such a thing mm. to ever happen either with me or anyone around him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's conscious to have the conversations. Yes. Um, what about you, Shakes? Any, you know, um, people in your life, the community around you, how do they view GBV? How do you talk about it with them um, in terms of trying to shift the narrative and not normalizing it? Um, what I try to tell people is you don't have to be violent. You do not have to be, um, as much as you need to be hard, there are better ways of communicating Mm. what you need to do or what you want or mm. um and agree to disagree you know mm. or how do they put it it's agree to disagree <laughs> <laughs> so um it's all about come on i don't have to show you if if we are talking about something and we disagree about it mm. i don't have to hit you mm -hmm. for me to pass my message across mm -hmm. we talk about it and we go our own separate ways mm -hmm. you know it's just that and then this thing about violence, no matter what it is, sexual abuse, um, mm. physical abuse, whatever it is, um, and especially for me when it comes to physical abuse, I just cringe mm. because you do not know whether that person you're going to hit has a, an, an underlying condition. condition. Yeah. Yeah. You may just slap the person, someone mm. falls on the floor and they're gone. Mm. Your intention was not to yeah. murder mm. the person, but mm. your intention was just to pass your message mm. across. Mm -hmm. But how did, you push, uh, how did you pass your message? Mm someone died yeah. out of it because just anything to do with physical just yeah stop yeah don't. yeah so and it comes to everything else just don't mm, you know just respect people exactly. and not and yet you still find that um we, i mean we're still having these conversations you know and and sometimes you're even clashing with your peers and clashing with your community um if we're to look at it from a policy perspective and not necessarily to get technical but you know, you would think that, for example, safe houses would mm. be a no-brainer. Mm. You know, <laughs> you would think they'd be a no-brainer. Yeah. Why do you think there's a gap there? Let's even start with that as an example of, and we were talking about this earlier when we were doing prep on the table, and I was saying, I feel really bad when somebody says she should just leave, because I'm like, you're assuming that she's able to, where will she go? But if there was safety measures in place, maybe, are you able to speak to those gaps, the ones that are quite obvious, um, and, and why you think they exist and the immediate ways in which they can be addressed. I mean, there's 15 ways I can come at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, where do, yeah, I, where begin? Do, I, where do I begin? Um, let me just start by giving an illustration. In After our 2007 post-election violence, um, some woman's house was burned down and she went to the police station to report it, but she was raped as well. Mm -hmm. And so she was asked at the police station, would you like to report burnt house or the rape which is more important 
So let's just say much as we say we are equal, much as we say we are at the table, the truth of the matter is this, women's issues are still viewed as peripheral, as non-issues, as issues that don't make sense. So when you ask, shouldn't a shelter be a no-brainer? And I can tell you with authority that the first shelter was established, is it last year? Government shelter. There are shelters, yes, but they're private. So why is this not a national agenda, a county agenda, a priority, that we have shelters that if someone is being threatened at home with domestic violence, they can come to the mm. shelter. Mm. If someone is at a, at a threat of being raped, they can come to the shelter. If someone perhaps has already been raped and needs to go to court away from that house where maybe the father or the mother is raping them, can stay in the shelter for the duration of the case, but it's not a priority, that tells you where gender mm. issues are ranked. Mm. Um, another thing is, whenever we talk about gender issues, it's relegated to the gender department or the state department, and everybody says, what's this got to do with me? And yet, when we talk about something such as rape, think about it, walk the journey with the, with, with, with the victim, will we? So she reported to the chief. Is the chief in the gender department? Mm. If she reported to the police officer, is he in the gender department? She will go to the prosecutor for the matter to be prosecuted. Is that a gender, strictly speaking, issue? The judge, tell me if he works in the Ministry of Gender. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody needs to begin to see what their specific role is in addressing this issue. Mm -hmm. And so I'm only speaking at it from the perspective of prosecution investigation, but let's even now go now the other way in terms of preventing it. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely everybody's role step in and you know i liked what Shix was saying is that you probably want to pass a point and you turn violent or you do all of those issues why don't we under address those underlying issues mm. if the reason as to why we suddenly have a spike of violation and people are saying it's mental health let's address the mental health issue if the issue is people no longer find their role in in the society or in the community because our traditional society as well they said the men will provide men will be your protector, men will be all of the other distinct roles. In our present day, everybody's working, we will all hire a, a security company to provide our, our you know, protection. protection yes. And so people find that they do not have a role, cannot mm -hmm. define themselves, don't understand who they are, and seek to assert their authority in the most absurd and obscene ways. So why are we not having those conversations, redefining our roles, redefining masculinity, finding out who we are and pursuing our purposes mm -hmm. as opposed to be to busy asserting ourselves through raping women, mm. through beating women, through mm. harassing women, through asserting ourselves in the wrong spaces. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a social discussion, it's a legal discussion. Mm. Um, and on the legal side, we do have laws. Yeah. We have the Sexual Offences Act. We have protection, uh, the PD, PDVA Act. We've got numerous laws that are there. But then again, the question is, are they being enforced? Yeah. Because it's gender priority. Mm. No, it's not. Yeah. I almost mm. feel like a lot of what you said speaks to um, just having these conversations, you know, on a day to day. I don't know if it's uh, Shik Soshiko who said, um, you know, just whatever little thing. It, you shouldn't let it slide. Yeah. And I think it's so unfortunate that it has to get really bad before it's considered serious. Yeah. Um, I speak to people who are going through processes of separation ETC and they'll always be asked, have you tried everything? That's another huge trigger <laughs> question. What is everything? <laughs> Define everything. Yeah. Um, you know, and they'll say, you know, and one of them was just saying it's so hard because she feels like she has, you know, have you spoken to the pastor? Have you gone for marriage counseling? So I've done all that. Okay, but have you tried every and you know, and so you're also trying to to struggle and then you realize again there's those societal or cultural issues that even these some of these experts are coming with and they're mm. saying, Have you tried everything? Mm. Um I feel like I was going somewhere with this. I think I was just <laughs> reflecting on the, <laughs> I feel like I was reflecting on the fact that yeah. No, I get I get very um triggered by this conversation because I, I think sometimes maybe because we are exposed or have information, yeah. you kind of feel like surely by now it should be part and parcel mm -hmm. of our everyday learning in school, mm -hmm. in the church. Yeah. It would just be so much more, I think there'd be some form of impact mm -hmm. if we're talking about it in every possible way. 
I don't know whether I'll make, I can make this comparison. We can feel free to edit it out, but let me let me raise it. You know the way we addressed HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Remember how it was so aggressive and bold, and billboards and campaigns yeah. and harping on and on and on, and then there was kind of a shift in the results. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, <laughs> and you left it out. Is 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 that what is needed? And maybe um, we can go around and think about next steps. And I can again go back to Judy and say you've talked about that there's a social and legal issue. Um, and so we're here right now. In a perfect world, what would need to happen today to begin <laughs> to address this? Even as we touch on the the Generation Equality Forum and what you hope will come out of that in terms of addressing gender-based violence. Okay, um, let me just start by saying on, on the social is for us to understand it's not a competition. Mm. I think people think, again, sorry, always say this, rights are diminishing resources. Mm. So we've got these two water bottles. And if I take Sheik's water, mm. then two for me, none for her. Yay. Mm. But that's not what rights are. And so people need to begin to understand. So as, as women begin to assert themselves, and to get their rights, men should understand it's not at the expense of their rights and mm. they should join us. Mm. They should join us in ensuring that women are not raped. Mm. They should join us in ensuring, so at the social level, mm -hmm. to get everybody to play ball, you've got everybody to understand that they've got a stake in it and they're not losing anything mm. by joining this campaign. Mm. Um, interesting again, sorry, I, I just keep coming up with this dodgy examples. We, we had we had a women's only run a few years back where we're bringing attention to, to issues and we said, you know, if you are a survivor, if mm. you fight for women's rights, if you do any of those things, run, right? And the questions were, why are you not allowing men to run? And mm. I, I, I asked and I said, if you had a children's run, because um, you're encouraging children to run for for their cause, would you say why are adults not running in this in this in this race? Mm -hmm. No, you wouldn't. And so I need for us to again understand it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. In terms of of the legal, only one prayer: enforce the law, mm -hmm. enforce it, investigate it. Everything from mm -hmm. the slightest to the biggest, mm -hmm. from whether it's harassment. Yeah. all the way to the most egregious. Mm. Let's enforce the law. Um, and in terms of generation equality, I think it provides a wonderful opportunity. We've not had this discussion in a proper way and say, look, let's take, let's let's keep short accounts or let's just take an audit. Where mm. are we? Mm -hmm. So we've got fabulous laws, but why are we having women raped every day? Yeah. We've, you know, we're saying we've got two thirds gender rule and hopefully now a new, you know, mm -hmm. chief justice was a woman mm -hmm. and we're at the top of the table, are we not? But why are we having girls being married off at 10? Yeah. Why are we still having people being cut, you know, FGM? Mm. This provides us that opportunity mm. just to, to audit ourselves and say, mm. let's be honest. Are we really talking about, are we, are we being truthful? Mm. Are we really equal? Are we? Mm. And so the Generation Equality Forum actually gives us a chance to to be honest, to say we are not equal. So what can we do to actually make mm. men and women mm -hmm. equal human beings in society? Yeah. Oh, that, mm. that would be a big win. Mm. <laughs> and just even, you know, just an accountability. I think sometimes even being accountable, somebody admitting that this is an issue yeah. is also powerful because sometimes there's also a lot of denial, you know. Um, so that would be a big win. Um, Shiks, what do you hope to see when it comes? I know we've touched on it a little bit as um, as a woman, as an influencer, as somebody who has, you know, either played roles which are pretty <laughs> difficult and and kind of speak to some of these issues, um, and just as somebody who is is looking out to the future, how do you hope this conversation will be different in another twenty six years? Well, um, I just hope if. God forbid if anything was to happen to me come in terms of GBV mm. and or just anyone mm. that I know or even I don't know, we don't have that aspect of um, I love to shy off mm. or I can't speak out because mm. even if I say it or even if I, mm. um, I, I seek help, I won't be assisted. Mm. I don't want to be in a position where if I go to talk to my mom, She'll tell me, go sort your issues with your husband. Mm. I, I don't want to be, I don't want our children to, or even the generation to come to start thinking that I have to talk to my mother because I'm going through this in the house with my husband 
or my partner, I have to come and let me be the one to make my stand. And mm-hmm. at the same time, knowing if I go and report such a scenario, I'll be assisted. Like you put it, Judy. It's Judy, yes. Like you put it. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, like it's you your put presence. It. Yeah. It's your presence. <laughs> hey, and your English is good. So as you put it. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> but it's true. Like you put it, you know, um it's about time we started raising our children, telling them this is wrong and showing them that you do not have to be physical mm. with someone for you to uh, to to um make mm. your uh, make your point known, you know? Let's just mm. let's not just normalize mm. GBV. Yeah. It's it's too much. Mm. It's too much. Let us be hard. And it's both sides. We're not just talking about the women, we're talking about the men as well, because mm. these cases are happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's both ends. Mm. Let's just not normalize mm. GBV. Yeah, mm. let's stop normalizing yeah. it and let's continue to speak out. Thank you. What mm. about for you? And oh. I think, as you said, HIV and how it was put in our faces, mm. I think that's where we need to go. I think that's where I need to go. I need to speak it out, speak it out, tell my daughter, tell anyone who cares to listen that this is wrong and it should not happen. I think we should just mm. just speak yeah. yeah and say it. Yeah, be intentional, be consistent and yeah. and and speak it out. And I don't know whether you can also speak to one more thing. You touched on it, um the the role of men. And oh. I I know that I know. It always <laughs> it always conjures <laughs> different reactions. <laughs> But you know it's 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 critical. I mean, again, when I when I think about yes, you know, we're raising young men etc. Mm. Um, and it's not that we need to condition them to adjust mm. to listening, mm. but how do we speak to this um, mm. the pushback or the fact that sometimes equality is seen as less less for me, more for them, and in a way we're losing out on people who could have who could mobilize and become major allies in addressing this issue. And even before that, I, again, I mentioned in the beginning that um, when when I was in, in, in Madare, I, I found like there was a little bit of a shift. It was incredible that a lot of the people who were speaking out were, were men, border riders, matatu drivers, and we were just speaking to them. And I like that they said these issues still happen in some of these areas, but it's no longer the same because now we are calling perpetrators out. Yeah. Um, when a young woman says this happened, we're listening. And like I said, it was a, it was a small section of the place, but it was so incredible just hearing it from random people. Because I said, I just, maybe these guys have been coached. Let me go where. <laughs> yeah. And they were all saying the same thing. They were all saying, it's, yeah, it's kind of changing. I mean, right now you do have somebody thinking twice before having to raise their fists. Mm. And if they do, they know what will happen, which was great. And that it, it was, uh, some of it was men. How do we address this issue of the role of men? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> Take your time, Judy. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's crazy because I work for a women's rights organization. Yeah. You know, yeah. Always on this other side. Yeah. But I I think it's it's back to basics. Mm. The truth of the matter is it's it's back to basics. Um, it's viewing the girl. It's viewing the woman as a human being. I don't believe in that line. You know, whenever uh, someone has been violated or is being domestically battered, someone tells you, imagine it's your sister. Imagine it's your mother. No, she's a human being, full stop. Mm -hmm. You don't have to imagine her as someone close to you in order for you to be able to empathize and understand that that is a violation that shouldn't happen in the first instance. Mm -hmm. The people we work for, I don't don't know them. I woke up into... um, like I told you, equality now works across Africa. I walk into Mali or into Sierra Leone and find a girl who's been violated and immediately associate with that. Um, and so there's need to first just paint and create the image that the woman is a human being just like you, with dreams just like you, hoping to go to school just like you and make it. She's born with the full set of potentials that you have been born with. And by you doing any of these things, if any of these things happen to you, that's the same impact, in fact, worse because of the inherent vulnerabilities she has because she's a woman. And so I need for that to, to be taught early and to sink. I don't think, and it's it's horrible for me to make this comparison, but then when we talk about racism and everybody says racism, racism is not, um, it's not inherent, it's taught. I think so. So is um, so is patriarchy, and so and so it, because I don't think um, children 
are born figuring out I'm going to fix this little girl. Mm. I'm going to beat her up. I'm superior to her. Mm. I I watch kids play. I've got a little boy. Mm. I watch him play with girls and he's happy to do that. I mean, because of their structure and the way they are, they'll be they'll be rough, they'll climb trees and so on, and a girl probably would prefer a calmer game. But I've also seen girls who are rough and climb mm. trees and that's okay too. Yeah. And so it's us who then portray an image of superiority versus inferiority. Mm. It's us who then say this is don't do this because you're a boy, mm. do this because you're a girl. And so at that very early age, the role of men, it starts there. You begin to not condition, but allow everybody to understand everybody is a human being with rights. And so respect mm. that. Mm. Pursue your goals. And it's interesting. I mean, I did go for for a certain interview. And they said, but, you know, women are now, you know, at the top. What are you talking about? They're making it, right? You know, uh, you now have so many. The, the interviewer named a few uh, people in position for me. And I just asked him, when's the last time a boy was kicked out of school on account of pregnancy? Mm. Mm. And it's a fact. And just this year alone, or last year and this year alone, mm. when the numbers were put up, it was it was shocking. And you would find, yes, many of those girls perhaps have engaged in cons- quote-unquote consensual relationship, but many of them have been violated as well, being minors in their home context. And so just beginning to understand that, again, putting measures or bridging gaps to get women to get to a certain place is not at your expense. Mm. Nobody stopped you Mm -hmm. from going to school. Go to school. So if someone is providing access for this girl to go to school, it's not at your expense. Go to school too. Join her. Why don't we meet at the top? Mm -hmm. Join her. Let's 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 all meet at the top, shall we? And then you talked about this AIDS and and Mm. and and Shika you've also talked about it. Um the AIDS approach, believe it or not, that easy approach um, mm. Sorry, not to go technical. It's called a multi-sectoral approach. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get everybody to get in, mm. because it's affecting us. Mm. It's killing us as a society. It's 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 producing uh, an inept society. People who are wounded, um, people who are are, are not at a hundred, people who will not contribute economically, people who will 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 not add value to the entire society. And why would you want that? Yeah. Mm. So you know. Yes, it's MSA, everybody on board. Mm. Let's let's plug and play. Let, yeah. let everybody come on board. Mm. I think you've summarized it so well. <laughs> I will not add much to that <laughs> because you've talked about, you know, you know, multi-sectoral approach. You've mm. talked about it's not at my expense. Let's go to school together. Let's meet at the top. I love that line. Um, and I think the one thing that we've all kind of said here is let's listen. Yeah. Um, sometimes it sounds like a, just a very simplified statement but I do really find that people don't feel heard and they don't feel seen. Mm-hmm. And so therefore they don't feel like their pain is, ad- they feel like it's, they can't validate it. It's invalidated, right? Especially, um, maybe not especially, but even in situations like emotional abuse, you know, where somebody, because it can't be seen, it can't be real. And I think along with what Shiko and Shiks and Judy have said, it's we, we really need to listen, not hear, listen, because we may think we're listening, but if we continue to invalidate the pain that survivors deal with, if we continue to normalize certain conversations, if we continue to enable certain narratives, then we're really not listening and we're really not leaning into how it's affecting the society as a whole. There is so much to say in this conversation. It is, you cannot exhaust it in one session. The important thing is it is a conversation among many that is happening, that will continue to happen. And it includes you. You're not just a viewer, you're a participant. So um, please raise your own voice. Please educate yourself. Please listen. Please learn and even unlearn whatever is problematic that you feel like you've carried with you. But do not normalize it. Do not be silent because that's being complicit. Um, And that in itself is so dangerous. So um, thank you to you incredible women um, and panelists for sharing your views. Thank you for watching. Please use the hashtag Your Voice Matters and hashtag Act for Equal. This conversation is going to be on Capital FM and also on the pages of Equality Now and Better for Kenya. And we'll see you again next time.